Hello everybody, I'm Sam Trotter, and welcome to another optimizing video for Borderlands 1. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at Lilith the Siren, probably the most overpowered class in this game, uh, definitely the most versatile for sure. And yeah, we're just going to break down this skill tree. I'm going to tell you what to take, why, and we're just going to break it down going in order. And talk about the class as a whole. At the end of the video, I'll show you my complete build and give you some tips on loot what you want to be outfitting your siren with in the long run. But now, let's get started. Also, I apologize in advance, 69 is the maximum skill points you can acquire. I have 130 in this video because this is a hacked character. I played on the PlayStation 3, and I didn't want to get into another level 69 character on PC. That said, let's move forward. So, phase walk. Uh, phase walk, well, obviously you have to take it. But Phasewalk is probably the best of the action skills in the game. It's so versatile. It offers you defensive utility in that it allows you to escape sticky situations, and eventually, with the right skills, it lets you heal. It allows you to position offensively, as, as far as offense goes. It allows you to get right up against enemies you want to kill. So if you're using your um, anarchies, if you're using your shotguns, if you're using your Iridian weapons, you can get right in the enemy's face. Um without having to take the usual damage of sprinting at them. Phase walk is just a remarkably powerful ability. The explosion damage itself, when you leave phase walk, it explodes. The, that damage is fairly underwhelming, but it's made up for the, by the fact you can apply elemental effects with it. So you'll pretty much only want to be using corrosion and incendiary, as these are the two most powerful damage over time effects. Uh, shocking is largely irrelevant, unless you're facing purely iridians. Uh, and even then, Iridians are rarely in reach. So, Corrosion, though, against the Crimson Lance will do fantastic damage. And Incendiary against any flesh-based targets is quite helpful. Let's move into the skill tree. So, Controller. Diva. This is a good skill. 5% uh, shield capacity is quite fine. It's not overwhelming. It's not a game changer. But 25% shield capacity is very useful, and phase walk will usually allow you to fully recuperate your shield on use. Thus, this is basically giving you 25% additional health uh, for the purpose of the entire fight. So this is really strong. This is really poor. Melee attacks can daze. For one, it's really bad for your DPS if you're using melee attacks, uh, with the exception that we'll get to eventually a phase strike. So melee attacks massively decrease your DPS, as at every point in the game, your gun will be doing larger amounts of damage per second than your melee can. So basically, for striking to be worthwhile, the day's affliction has to be worth dropping our damage, and it simply is not. Um, for many reasons. For one, having to get melee range against some enemies is extremely dangerous and untenable. You just can't do it. It's too large a risk. Uh, but then also, days itself... It lowers one enemy's lethality, um, it makes them slower, they don't attack as often, and when they do attack, they're rarely accurate, so it's useful in that regard, but it's just too risky to get up close and apply it. Uh, this, this ability just is not effective enough to me merit the selection. So we're going to take D.Va here on the first tier. Interglow is amazing. This ability is top tier, outstanding. Highlight this thing in teal and stick it at the top of your guide. Interglow allows you to regenerate while phase walking, and at max rank, you can basically regenerate the entirety of your health while phase walking when you combine Interglow and eventually hit and run. So yes, Interglow gets exponentially better once you get hit and run because those four extra seconds of phase walk duration, and we'll talk about this one later, but those four extra seconds really let you cap out your health. Interglow is fantastic. It's probably, it's what contributes to making Lilith by far the best solo character in the game. Dramatic Entrance is horrible because, again, Daze is not worth it. And you also have to look at what it's competing against. And Interglow, like, this is this is a bait. This is my baby. Dramatic Entrance just can't compare, although I do love the, uh, the icon here. It, it probably is one of the best icons. Girl Power. Girl Power is fantastic. Not to mention, it has that sweet synergy, the winnergy, if you if you allow me to say as such, with D.Va. You know, you're getting that combo. And it's a combo in the same tree, which is even better. Because D.Va increases shield capacity, and this regenerates percent shield per second. So yeah, Girl Power, really amazing kill skill. Hard to get? 
also amazing. You really, 15 seconds off your phase walk cooldown time is almost 50% if you look at that cooldown. That's going to get you phase walking more often. That's going to get you more inner glow regen. That's going to get you more regen on your shields so you can make full advantage of, take full advantage of D.Va. It's really good stuff. You want your phase walk up as often as possible. It's your get the fuck out card. It's your offensive uh, Swiss Army knife. Do what you want with it. Mind Games is fine. Um, this one has the advantage where, unlike these two, it doesn't require you to do anything outside your normal play pattern in order to apply days. So that part is helpful. However... I would advise you to waylay taking up mind games until you've gotten everything else you want. Mind games is not essential. It doesn't boost the DPS, so it's basically garbage. Uh, not not always true, but to me it's garbage. In my heart, I just can't take it because the, there's no damage return here. Uh, it's a survivability return, really. It'll help you a little bit, but as a keystone, this is pretty weak. All right, Quicksilver. Now, this is a skill up my alley. Now, you can just look at this and see why I'm in love with this. 25% fire rate. What is that? That is 25% damage per second. Boost it. Take it. Enjoy that sweet fire rate. Uh, this is a fantastic skill. Might be one of the best tier ones in the game. Uh, it's up there with Roland's impact ability. Spark. Uh, spark is fine. Elemental effects are extremely powerful. The problem with Spark for most of the game is that you can't rely on what guns you're going to have at any given time. So while Spark is fantastic with certain weapons, it is fairly poor with others. Whether or not you take advantage of Spark also relies on what weapon you're using because you have to have knowledge of how elemental proccing works in this game. The idea is that the longer it's been since your last elemental proc, the higher the likelihood is you proc on your next attack. And it's it differs based on weapon type. With sniper rifles, your first shot in a clip will almost always proc elemental. So Spark is a fairly useless if you're sniping with Lilith. However, if you're using a submachine gun, where the chance is generally lower, Spark may get you more procs. Um, this is a pretty late game skill though, only take this if your late game build features something like a Hellfire, which it probably should to be honest, but a Hellfire, a Pestilent Defiler, a Crux, Virulent or otherwise. Um, yeah, if you're using weapons like that, Spark can assist you in your damage. Now tier 2 here is cr just straight garbage. Both these skills are really poor. So Radiance, um, the shock damage is pretty negligible, and... What makes matters worse is shock damage is mostly effective against shields, which are pretty small and pathetic to begin with. Most shields you can knock off within 0.5 seconds of attacking someone, so... Radiance is pretty poor, but it's also against poor competition and resilience. Uh, resilience is fine. Minus 30% elemental damage is good. That's good survivability, and it may save your life once or twice over the course of the single-player campaign. However... Uh, it's dubious. It's dubious for sure. This is like Grit. It's one. Of, it's another skill like Grit and like uh, Mind Games where you don't want to take it until you've gotten everything else you want. So if you're going down the Elemental Tree, I would actually recommend maxing Quicksilver first and then taking Spark or Radiance. Neither are super impressive. Uh, Spark can be impressive depending on your build, but they'll get you through. Next, Venom. This is bad because melee attacking is bad. It does have some nice Winergy with Phase Strike, you know? You get that Silent Serpent build where you're just smacking them with the fist. Uh, but... Uh, uh, it's so situational. Venom is really situational. You could respec into this for the Crimson Lance portions, because against them, this is actually a very good investment. It can make your melee attacks worthwhile to your overall damage output. Dubious, however, and I would never take Venom if you are not already going down this tree. So take Venom if you first went down Assassin Tree and took um, things like Silent Resolve, Hit and Run, and Face Strike. Intuition is good. 50% movement speed is pretty fantastic. Uh, for one, that's going to allow you to dodge and juke fairly well. The enemy tracking gets a little bit worse the faster you move. But then also, the movement speed will allow you to spread Phoenix faster. So these two abilities have fantastic synergy. Uh, so I would take Intuition. You may think that movement speed 
it doesn't contribute directly to your damage output, but it contributes indirectly by allowing you to more quickly get into a position where you can maximize your output. So, there you go. Now, Phoenix. Ooh, whew, what a skill. So, you get to be Fox, uh, that Harry Potter Dumbledoge pet. You get to run around with your fiery wings and just, yeah. It's a funny skill because basically you spread fire damage to nearby enemies. So, when you have this, you use intuition speed boost to just run up and, like, cuddle with the enemies as they slowly burn to death. It's pretty adorable, to be honest. And, you know, I wouldn't complain if Lilith land ran over and cuddled me to death, however fiery it may be. Uh, the damage... Uh, so, the damage is good. The damage is really good because it keeps stacking more fire damage over time effects on them, which eventually culminate in massive damage to them. So, that's really strong. The chance to save ammo is handy. It's handy, especially because Lilith is inclined towards submachine guns, which burn ammo like nobody's business. So this is actually really effective, the chance to save ammo. Gotta love Phoenix. Alright, moving on to the assassin tree. Slayer. Critical hit damage. This is really good. About, if you are playing well, about 25% of your bullets ought to be critical hits, to be perfectly honest. Uh, depending on your weapon, of course. If you're using a sniper rifle, it should be about 80% should be crits. If you're using a submachine gun, you can probably get by with 10% crits. Regardless, this is going to boost your damage a lot. And this ability is what makes her the second best Cromorak Slayer. Well, not just this ability. But this contributes to making her the second best Cromorak Slayer after Mordecai. So Slayer is really good. Silent Resolve is fantastic. This ability is absurdly overpowered. Um, and you might not even realize it because it undersells itself. So let's talk about this ability and how it lies to you. How the developers hate you and don't want to actually tell you how good this is. So it says a few seconds after phase walking you get damage resistance. Take a guess at how long a few seconds is to the Borderlands developers. Just, just think about it. Are you thinking two seconds? Are you thinking three seconds? Maybe? Are they generous? Are they giving you four seconds? Think again, this ability lasts for seven seconds after you finish phase walking. Let, let that sink in. Let dwe Dwell on that a little bit. So at max rank, you're getting 70% damage reduction. You only take a third of the normal damage you would take. And you only take a third of normal damage for seven seconds. You know what can happen in seven seconds, my friends? You're going to get phase walk back in seven seconds if you're full build. That means you permanently take a third of normal damage. That is why Silent Resolve maybe, maybe, is the best ability in the game. I'm putting it out there. I'm stamping it with my, with my sign. It's not even a damage ability, but it's so good. It allows her to survive a lot of Cromorax's attacks that other characters simply cannot, which reduces the uh, randomness of doing Cromorax with her. It, it's really good. All right, hit and run. Also fantastic. Uh, melee damage, we don't really care about. Meleeing is not particularly good. But phase walk duration is delicious. Four extra seconds on phase walk means two things. One, you get more inner glow. At max rank, inner glow gives you 7% of your health back per second. So four extra seconds is 28% max health back. Four extra seconds means your shield is going to have more time to recharge during phase walk, which means you can exit phase walk if you have this, with full shield and full health. That is a complete reset, and that's really strong. Um, the extra duration is also useful, of course, for traveling. You gotta think in the normal campaign, uh, Lilith is really nice because you can travel much faster. You move really fast while phase walking. So this gives you four extra seconds of fast travel, and this lets you reposition even more accurately. You know, you can wait out enemies. Hit and run is really strong. Enforcer is good. It's good, it's not great. It pales in comparison to Silent Resolve and Hit and Run, but it's decent. It's decent. That's it's pre it's a pretty boring ability to be honest. High velocity is really good. This ability is amazing. Uh, don't underestimate it. Basically, that extra bullet velocity probably translates. This is just pulling a ballpark number out, but that bullet velocity might translate to landing ten percent more shots, twenty percent more shots. And it gives 20% more bullet damage. So let me be let me be frank with you folks. Let me be honest. If this ability only gave the bullet damage, it would still be top fucking tier. 20% extra DPS is nothing to scoff at. Nothing to uh to hoist your petard at, you know? 
So, that the Bull of Velocity is just a delicious icing on a delicious cake. Blackout is really good. It's really, really good. This is going to allow you to get that sweet, sweet, like, five or six second phase watt cooldown. So blackout combos with hard to get, and that hard to get reduces your cooldown to 21 seconds. Then you can get class mods, and I highly recommend you do, which boost hard to get, which can reduce your phase walk all the way down to about 10 seconds on the cooldown. At 10 seconds, if you get a kill with max rank blackout, it's almost already back off cooldown. It allows you to have this play style where you phase walk in, you appear, you assassinate an enemy, and then you immediately phase walk again. It's almost foolproof. It almost makes the game like taking candy from a drunk skag, if you know what I'm saying. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. Blackout's really strong. Whew, now this... Alright, now we need to sit down and we need to be realistic, my friends. We need to look ourselves in the face. Look each other in the face and be honest. This is the coolest ability in the game, in my opinion. I think it's the coolest capstone. But is it useful? We have to we have to ask ourselves this. I think it is. I think this skill is worth putting on your build. Well, for one, we have too many skill points, so it's going to make the build for that reason. But the other reason that I would compel you to take this is that it actually is meaningful damage. When you get up close, when you're phase walking, you can get right in their face, right? Just, just cuddle right in there. And you can melee them in the face, so it'll always be a crit. So phase strike will always be a crit. And when you're doing a phase strike crit with Slayer, with hit and run, that 35%, with Venom, that is some spicy damage. People underestimate it because melee as a play style is not tenable. It's not viable to do only melee. But it's not a question of only melee. The combo, the, the, the play style I just described, where you phase walk up, you unload your damage. The combo is you phase walk up to an enemy, you phase strike them in the face, you just hit them in the jaw, you execute them with your gun, uh, be that a shotgun, be that a... Hellfire, be that a Bessie, whatever you're, whatever you're talking, whatever you're packing. You execute them with the phase strike, one shot from your weapon combo, and then you phase walk again. Phase strike is, is very, very good. Um, it's awesome. It's my favorite skill. It's really good. We got to sit down and we have to realize that just because we can't only melee doesn't mean that we don't sometimes melee. Okay, okay, we're, we're gonna be adults about this? Awesome. So, um, I guess now I'll just tell you what order I would do. So if I was doing a single player playthrough, your first playthrough, I would pick Lilith, because she's awesome, and I would go with the Assassin Tree for my first playthrough. What I would do is first I would take Silent Resolve, five points, I would take Hit and Run, Five points, and then I would I would juke this tree. I would go over to controller, and you're gonna take Diva, and you're gonna take Inner Glow. This is about the safest, most survivable build you can possibly do for your first playthrough. It's not the most exciting. It doesn't do the most damage, and I'm all about the damage. But, but with this build, you're never gonna die. If you do it your own goddamn fault, and you can't sue me for it. You're gonna have a good time. You're always gonna have full health. You're going to have plenty of mobility, plenty of survivability. This build gives you a lot of flexibility, is what, is what I'm saying. A lot of abilities, you know. Whew. All right. And after this, after all this, I would go for hard to get. And this is this is pretty much what you want. This is really solid. Uh, this is a great way to end a first playthrough and begin the second. From here, what I would do is I would pick up high velocity and I would pick up phase strike. And this is a pretty fun build. This is kind of your first power spike where the build has really come into come into its own, if you will. From here, once you have this, this is your core. From here, it's picking what you need. If you don't think you're doing enough damage, if you want more damage, pick up those five points in Quicksilver. That might be the next direction I go. 
If you feel you want more survivability, girl power is amazing. Grab that girl power. You rock it, girl. You are an empowered woman who cuddles with people until they die. It's, it's amazing. Uh, well, I guess you don't have your cuddle power yet, but you'll get there. So this is a really strong base. Uh, this is this has plenty of DPS, plenty of survivability. It lets you do the combo. Next, I would take Blackout for maximum phase walking. Now, mind you, if you have a class mod that gives you plus four to hard to get, you don't need Blackout. That gives you five extra points. You don't need it. So, remember that. And right now, we have ten points left to spend with this, this current setup right here. So, we have to make some decisions. Or, oh, pardon me, pardon me. We have, um, we have a little more than that. I started with 130, um, and we have 69 points to spend. So, we get to spend until we're down to 51. So, the next skills we can take, Enforcer, if you want to kill skill and you're playing solo, Enforcer is really, really strong. Um, Slayer is a great boost to damage. I would take Slayer, because at this point, you're probably getting ready for Cromrax. You're getting ready to get hyped up to kill him. Enforcer is a strong kill skill, but I really want Phoenix right now, you know? I'm... It's, it's drawing on me. So, this is late game. At this point, this is late game. You got most of your abilities set up. I'm gonna go for Spark. It's based on your loadout, but I'm going for it. I'm gonna go for Intuition. Go for Venom if you're fighting the Crimson Lance, but otherwise Intuition. And then I'm getting the Phoenix. And just like that, you are Fallout Boy, you are the Phoenix, uh, you are the Remix, and you're good to go. Uh, this is pretty much what you need. Uh, we have a couple extra skill points, I believe. So we could spend them on a couple things. You might want to slot a point into Mind Games. You might want to slot a point into Enforcer. If you have extra, you could always go for Resilience if you're still worried about if you're getting killed by elemental effects too much, particularly in the General Nox DLC. And that DLC, there's a lot of enemies with elemental dots they apply, so you want to get rid of those or survive them, I suppose. But this is a really, really strong baseline. Now, alternative builds. So, we're gonna, we're gonna take a quick gander at what you could do alternatively if you really want to go for Phoenix on your first playthrough, which is the more aggressive build. So, what are we gonna do? We're going here, and we want to get Phoenix. So, we're, Quicksilver is a no-brainer. And this is first playthrough, so we're actually gonna go for Radiance, because the shock damage is actually worthwhile on first playthrough. We're taking it. Now, Venom or Intuition is a difficult choice. I go Intuition because the experience is actually helpful on your first playthrough as well, which gives Intuition another kind of benefit. And then we take Young Money Phoenix, and we just run around. We know we're just we're, we're flaming, we're happy, we're burninating the countryside, burninating the peasants. Um, at this point, you rename your save file Trogdor, and you go ham. So there you go. There's that. Uh, as far as your Cromrax build goes, the only real rules for Cromrax builds is you need hit and run plus inner glow. You need the, that combo um, as you need the regeneration. You need hard to get blackout because you need phase walk to be up as often as possible. And you need Slayer because all damage against Cromrax is critical. That's really all you need. This game gives you quite the surplus of skill points. So you actually have quite a bit of flexibility in terms of your level 69 end game build. Uh, so you really don't have to worry about it that much, to be perfectly honest. Um, otherwise, items. So, item-wise, you want your Combustion Hellfire. Hellfires are fantastic. They're probably the best elemental weapon in the game. It's a legendary fire SMG that has a much higher than normal chance to proc fire. So this will let you stack fire on enemies and really destroy them. Um... The Hornet is really good. It'll, it's a great corrosive weapon. I personally prefer the Pestilent Defiler. It's a revolver. It has almost a 100% chance to proc corrosion on the first shot each time. It's a delicious weapon. Highly recommended. And Anarchy is your Cromrax killer. Anarchies probably have the highest theoretical DPS in the game. Uh, they're SMGs that spray four bullets. Uh, this is a decent one. This one... Actually, no, this is a pretty bad one. Uh, this character... I... I took the save file from a save file site. Uh, this is a pretty bad at Anarchy. They can get much better. But the idea is correct. You want the you want the Anarchy. 
Um, and you can do an Iridian build with her. She has an Iridian class mod, actually. Do I have it equipped? I do not. But the Iridian class mod for her is decent. Iridian weapons will never be as good as other builds, but it's, it's fine. It's quite viable. Uh, you can definitely get by with it. So, there you have it. That is Lilith the Siren. If you have any questions, if I said anything incorrect that you wish to discuss, and I can definitely amend the video, I can add some annotations correcting myself, post in the comments below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, post in the comments below as well. I'd love to hear it. Uh, like, subscribe, yada yada, typical YouTube jibber jabber. And thank you guys so much for supporting me. Hope you all have a lovely day. Take care, enjoy the Borderlands, and yeah, peace guys.